here in Munich at the Lean Kanban Central Europe Conference. And I'm meeting Bob Marshall. Bob is tweeting about this right shift thinking. And I have no clue what it is, so I'm going to find out. Okay, Bob, thanks uh, for sitting with me today. I've heard a lot of rumor about this right shift thing thinking. Well, I thought now I'm here at the Lean Kanban Central Europe Conference. You are here. So what's the best thing to, to give me a, a short uh, lecture on right shift thinking? Um, I don't know what the best thing is, maybe, but uh, we can start out by talking about where the name came from. Maybe that's good. Yes, um, please. And for me, um, I was looking at Steve McConnell's curve in one of his books, or oh, 10 years ago now, and um, it just seemed to me that this, this is the, the curve is basically a kind of left shifted or left skewed bell distribution curve mm -hmm. um, and it, it tells us that um, there's many many organizations in the industry which are over to the left in the kind of low performing bracket uh, low if, low effectiveness uh, inability to get things done mm -hmm. a lot of waste going on um, and, but there's a long thin tail to the right which uh, where there are relatively very few but much more higher performing organizations they can be f at least five times more effective than the norm um, and so right shifting just says uh, if you're an organization and you want to get become more effective uh, use your resources better you know increase your margins maybe or uh, increase your revenues whatever your business strategy mm -hmm. might be ro revolve around then you probably want to shift to the right exactly and it's that simple that's the right shift thinking yeah and tomorrow you're here at the conference, you give a presentation yeah. about the Marshall Model, I've been told. Yes, that's right. What's that? Um, well, the Marshall Model kind of built on that basic uh, left-shifted distribution mm -hmm. curve and asks the kind of next question, which is, well, if there is this distribution of organizations along this uh, axis, then what are these organizations doing differently? What accounts for the fact that there are some down the, the left-hand end which are really poor, mm -hmm. the, the bulk? fairly left on the left hand side and they're quite poor uh, and what are they doing differently from each other and what are they doing differently from the ones on the far right which are very much more effective much five five times more effective okay this is also a little bit this hyper productive teams that you that jeff is always talking about uh, yeah. yeah yes although my focus is on organizations exactly. rather than software development groups or teams or projects. Uh, you, you still have to give your presentation, but can you already tell us what's the big takeaway from your, from your talk? Sure. Um, the more agile you become, you more you, the more you limit your career options. Uh, the more agile you get, the more you limit your career options? Yeah, that's right. Uh, how do you mean? Um, a lot of uh, software developers are driven to become more agile because they feel it's the right thing to mm -hmm. do. You know, it's congruent with the software craftsmanship movement. Uh, it's becoming you're becoming more capable as an individual, mm -hmm. as a professional. But if you look at the left, uh, the right shifting distribution curve, what it actually means is you're shifting to the right, but the organizations within which you can find jobs are not, and therefore <laughs> the, the pool is getting uh, shallower and shallower of organizations you can find good jobs in. On the other hand, the big takeaway then also for the companies would be, if you want to have the best talent, Right shift your company. Yes, absolutely, because that's where the good people are going to be trying to find work. Okay. Well, Bob, thanks for the clarification. I'm going to write about this, and uh, thanks for your time. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure. When we're discussing Agile, most of the time we're talking about teams, projects, companies. But just talking with Bob Marshall, he really triggered me, it has consequences on the individual level as well. How does an agile career look like? I mean, when you're doing software development, you get introduced to XP, Kanban, Scrum. You see how things can be different. In fact, you learn how to do things well. And it's fun to be successful. It's fun to be in a team where the time for concept to cash is as short as possible. Where you're able to really delight customers by bringing them value. But if you've experienced that and you're, f you're ready for the next step in your career, not all companies comply to you because you don't want to go to companies that are doing worse. So, in fact, he's right. By right shifting your career, you're limiting your opportunities. On the other hand, I think there's good news too. I mean, companies want to be successful as well. So if they want to hire the best talents, it's obvious what to do. They need to right shift as well. 
So, the more people get introduced to Agile, the more people learn how to do things well, the more companies will see it's the only way forward. Because if you want to have the best talent, you need to right shift. And uh, Frans, have you taped it? Yeah, really, it's a wrap. And then what do you think about it? Well, it's brilliant, man. I'm agile as well. You're agile? Why? Already when I quit high school and I became a cameraman. So why are you agile then? Well, when I became a cameraman, it completely ruined uh, all my career opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> this video blog is sponsored by ProWareness.